look at that out there. Oh my god. This is awesome. We got a big one. Adrian. Hey, Dre. We got a big one out there, folks. Uh, uh, get ready for us. Hey, <laughs> Dre. You can't do anything about that. There's some cowboy out there. there. We are Adrian, Virginia, and Jael. We've just spent the last two and a half years converting a retired public school bus into our very own tiny home on wheels. Now my sons and I are embarking on an epic adventure across the country, exploring off the beaten path, building community, and making amazing new friends along the way. Click the subscribe button to join the adventure and follow the journey every Monday. We are finally traveling and moving along and we're not having any leaking. So cross your fingers for us. <laughs> uh, we just passed Chaco Canyon like maybe 30 minutes ago or something like that. You can't go without a mask. Oh, you're not going In New Mexico, masks are required indoors still, give me everywhere. Give me. Which, you know, that's a good thing. So we just stumbled upon this place called Salmon Ruins and we're gonna go and check it out and see what it's all about. I'm excited to see something that's not the inside of a repair shop, <laughs> finally. So we will take you along to see what this is all about. It comes with this guide and it's a self-guided tour. So you have to read it to yourself. <laughs> so there it is. Okay. Uh, you are about to enter a unique environment unlike any museum or historical park you have ever explored. At the San Juan County Archaeological Research Center and Library, within a half mile circuit, you can find yourself surrounded by a village nearly a thousand years old. A series of reconstructed dwellings that represent the diversity of cultures and time periods throughout New Mexico. And a museum where current research continues to explore and investigate the prehistoric heritage that belongs to all of us. So, I was talking about, so you said that uh, a relative group to the Aztecs built. Yes, built Chaco this Canyon, and, I mean, not Chaco Canyon, the, the salmon ruins here. And what year was it? Something 80? Uh, oh my 1088 gosh. 1088 to 1090. Wow, that is so long ago. Not all of this is that. The, the, these are reconstructions to show you different. Don't sit in the pool. Okay, but, points um, in history. Anyway, so I just linked that because you were talking about the Aztecs and their relation to the people who built this. And all I was saying is, uh, I was just going on a tangent about them, that uh, the it's like a, the cycle of civilizations in the past where you have a tough migratory, you know, nomadic group that comes into an area, you know, a squishy, soft civilization that's been complacent and conquers them and becomes their new rulers. Like you see this trope throughout history. You see it with the Indo-Europeans. You see it with the uh, the Gutians and and uh, uh, Babylon, Samaria. You know, all all those kinds of places. Uh, the Mongols, it's its just an endless cycle of these people that are hard and tough and coming in and taking down these civilizations. The travel guide's pretty long, I don't think they'll be able to hold it. Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> so we just take bits and pieces. So this is like an amphitheater. But look at that. Very cool. Chicken wire. I, I'm taking notes because if we buy a piece of land oh this one's just see that's why you don't make it with wood look at that crap what? there's mold and rot uh, because no, it's just faux there. adobe adobe <laughs> adobe <laughs> yeah it's adobe you gotta get your portmanteau game up <laughs> you're my what portmanteau. <laughs> i don't know what that is oh look it's just falling down in there see definitely not using wood. Por Pormanto. I don't know what Pormanto is. Something, I think that's how it's pronounced. It's just when you combine two words into one. Yeah, you see modern structure <laughs> is the Fadobi is dying right now. 
and this other place has been standing for how many thousand years? <laughs> uh, it's been standing for nearly a thousand. Yes. Okay, so, no, uh, my math is bad. Um, no, it would be a thousand years ago in 2090. My bad. So these are Adobe bricks. See, this is cool. I want to go inside. Do we look like inside? Awesome! It looks like everyone's walking through, though. Yeah. So, that's cool. And this is the little homestead. That's why they always say in earth building, um, you have to have a big hat and big boots. You see how that's degrading because of the water? You're supposed to use lots of stone. Yeah, it's beautiful. And what's inside there? Huh. A lot of old stuff for horses. Wow, look at how it's made with all these up and down logs. Oh, look, there's a sewing machine in there, just like the one I had in the tiny house. <laughs> oh, cool. Whoa. Cool. Mom, look, hit me the And I bet you it's very cold. Uh, nice and cold down there, too. Yeah. Wow, look at those massive beams. That's cool. Don't go in, though. I'm going into the amazing maze, or whatever it's called. You know, what? I have the feeling up there is the ruins. Okay, what would you this call one's called the bunkhouse. Yeah, there's a settler building here too. Wow, look at that. Oh, it's hot in there. Wow, look at the mud. And this is this ceiling looks okay. Wow. That one's made out of stone. Yeah, we don't go in though. Yes, we do. Wow. All stone. That's neat. And it's like the tree is sort of... Look, the roof falling down there. Yeah, you see? That's why we're not going in there. The tree is sort of holding up this roof here a little bit. There's another one! <laughs> I know, right? Number one. Marker one. Marker one. You are standing outside the northeastern corner of the Pueblo. The black wall stretching to your right is 120 meters, 394 feet in length and was three stories high in places. Current research suggests that this wall was deliberately aligned with astronomical observations that were based on the lunar standstill. Wow. You can see a hallmark of the Cohen wall construction, core and veneer masonry. Tabular sandstone blocks were carefully cut to the desired fit by skilled uh, stone masons. Wow. These precise blocks were used to build a smooth, flat base on both sides of the wall oh, called a veneer. Yeah. Unshaped rocks and mud were poured into the middle to form the core in the Four Corners region. These construction methods were unique to the Chacoan ancestral Pueblo culture. Wow, look how meticulous. Look at the teeny tiny hey, stones yeah. in it. Wow. At non-outlier sites during the same time period, construction methods were noticeably different, relying on thick mud mortar to hold rounded river uh, cobbles and unshaped stone in place. Such pueblos were often unable to support multiple stories and so were much smaller structures. A, quer a quarry about three miles north of Salmon Pueblo has been identified as the source for the tabular sandstone blocks. It is still uncertain exactly where the timbers used to build the roofs were harvested, but it is likely they were procured from sources as much as 25 miles away, including Largo and Gobernador Canyons. Okay, 
Wow. And I the mean, Carson, look, and the Carson National Forest. Look at this. To, to, to think that this is 900 years old. Yeah. That's advanced. amazing. That see, that's what I mean. They they like <sighs> they came up with all the, these ideas that were pretty part. advanced, you know, uh -huh. with their yeah. They, they came up with and all these. And look how thick the walls are. So they it, a little tiny fire would have kept them warm. Yeah. Uh, they came up with all these ideas independent of uh, Afro Eurasia. So this was probably a chimney right here. You see how they're. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. Oh, this is a round room. This is probably a ceremonial room. The original square room was built and initially used between 1068 and 1072. Parts, storage pits, and pot post holes indicate that the earliest structure was lived in during the planning and preparing stage that would have been necessary before initiating the large-scale construction of the great house. The square, the square room had a doorway to the right, allowing access to the next room, as well as a large T-shaped doorway. Those, those beams that come through. Yeah. Layers of clay and sand were used to create a floor surface and a circular foundation was added to the platform built with smaller cobbles and adobe to support the actual walls and bench of the kiva. After the distinctive Chacoan floor and veneer walls were built, a wood beam and adobe roof was built over the kiva. Tower kivas and great kivas, such as that found in the plaza, usually share characteristics Characteristic features that define them as Chacoan, and which are visi visible in the, this room. In the middle of the room, but usually oriented off-center, is a round or square hearth. The off-center location allows for a ladder to be placed through the smoke hole in the roof so that people can enter and exit. Behind the hearth is often an upright sandstone slab or thin masonry wall, which prevents the fire from being blown out. Ah, oh, so that that's the fire pit, and that was the spot where you put the uh, the ladder that went through the roof originally. Yeah. Neat. On the other side of the slab is a small box with wooden bars that allows fresh air to enter through a shaft under the floor that opens on the outside. Later kivas, such as the small ones built inside the Chacoan rooms, were constructed with a vent shaft in the wall similar to a chimney. Aligned with the hearth and vent shaft opening, but at the opposite side of the room, was a small hole in the floor that was sometimes made by burying a ceramic vessel. This hole is called the sipapu, and is a symbol of the, symbol of the ho hole that the earliest Puebloan ancestors climbed out of to be born into this world in their creation story. Wow. On either side of this central line of features are large floor vaults which are typically rectangular masonry boxes. In all of the excavations of floor vaults in the southwest, very few artifacts have been associated with them. Modern Puebloan people have suggested that if their ancestors used the floor vaults in a similar way, they might have been used to blast and start seeds to extend the growing season oh. or as giant drums for ceremony. So they made it like a, they made an indoor seed bed. <laughs> yeah. Garden bed. Neat. Finally, the wood beams seen on the bench were brought from the same source sources as the beams used to build roofs. They would have been covered over by adobe during use of the kiva and may represent a symbolic rather than functional value. Unlike many other rooms, the tower kiva continued to be maintained and used by the inhabitants even after the Chacoans were gone. Portions of painted plaster kiva mural were revealed during the ex excavation, but most of it had been damaged during the last catastrophic fire at Salmon Pueblo in the 1280s. 